are back for another season of full power slalom action. Yes, that's right. The 2017 PWA slalom season is about to kick off. In 2016, it went down to the wire and to the last event of the year. Uh, and the guys and the girls that won that last event, they are the ones that took the overall title. Okay, so let's have a look at the major players in the men's fleet. Number one. Matteo Iacchino, the young Italian, 27 years old, made it his first world title last year. Didn't have it all his own way. He really had to battle for that title. Training over in the TWS Center, he has really put a solid winter together. He's had help on the psychology side. He's been having a play around with the wave kit as well to take the focus a little bit off him. Uh, but he really looks ready for this season. Mortifon, always the bridesmaid, never the bride. Is he going to be the next Anders Brigdell? Well, I hope not. He does look like he's ready to take that title, although he's always just not quite managed it. Uh, in 2015, it was Antoine Albo that edged him on that last event. In 2016, obviously, Matteo Iacchino was the man. Is 2017 going to Pierre Mortifon's year? Fanatic North, he's very happy with the gear, he's tuned in, he's had a great winter's training uh, and he won the first event on the French Tour which looked like a monster event with over 90 competitors. So he is pumped, he is ready. I think 2017 might be his year. Williams, 37, from the UK. He's been doing the tour since the early 2000s. He's been Formula World Champion and he's always pretty much knocked in top 10 positions every year. 2013 was his bogey year. I think he was about 17, but since then he's got stronger. A 10th, then a 4th, and then a 3rd last year making that podium. Uh, the rumour on the beach is when he's happy in love, He's happy on the water, and that definitely seems to be the case for Ross Williams at the moment. All happy on the beach, and it's all smiles on the water. Can he break into that top two, or can he get his first slalom world title in 2017? You'll have to watch this space. Mother Nature's secret lotions. And she said... Can tell, aka the poodle. Oh, yes, this man is another consistent performer. When you watch him on the racetrack, he never looks the fastest and he's never first at that first mark. But he is one of the best racers on tour, one of the best jibers in the world. This guy can come into a mark in seventh place and come out in second or third. He is a mean, mean racer. He's been knocking on the door for a few years. He's been up there in the top three, I think, back in 2013. Had a bit of a shocker, 2015, but then changed sponsors. Avanti and Patrick boards, and it seems to have done the trick. He had a real fight with Ross Williams last year for that podium, just missing out in fourth place. But he is a contender. He is definitely a contender in 2017. Will this be him back on the podium this year? Will he get his first world title? Again, another one to watch. And why are you trying to trick me? You couldn't separate the ocean. Antoine Albo, yes. He had his worst year on tour for a few years and he was still fifth. I think in 2006, 7, 8, 9, 10, he was world champion. In 11, he missed out to be on Dunkerbeck, but then came back in 12, 13, 14, and 15. World champion every year. Can you count this man out? 
I don't think you can. He had a baby last year. Maybe his mind was on other things. He's been concentrating on the foil racing, but no doubt about it, he has still got the skills. He won probably the, well, the best event of the year over in Fuerteventura. They had lots of eliminations, full power slalom action, and he, I think, won with a race to spare. So he's still got the skills. He's still hungry for more. 2017, it's got a full calendar. We've got New Caledonia back. I tell you what, you'd be a brave man to bet against Antoine Albo. top five ranked sailors from last year and they are all in with a shout this year no doubt about it but we have had a winter since that last event we have had full-on training going on major camps to talk about the TWS Centre in Tenerife this is one of the first professional training camps uh, to kick off uh, and they are still going great guns I think they had bigger numbers this year than any other year uh, who are we going to see come out of this camp? Well, uh, rumour has it, Maciek Rudkowski has been sailing super good. we just seen him get a podium at the first French uh, slalom event of the year. And that was, like I said before, 90 plus sailors entered and wins up to 30, 40 knots. So it was a proper mean slalom event. Maciek got on the podium. Also, coming out of the TWS Centre, we've got to keep our eyes on Jordi Bonk. He's one of the young guns coming up from Holland. He's a very tall, gangly guy. He just missed out on his first podium last year in Costa Brava. Had to settle for fourth place. But the rumours are he is going very quick and he's looking super stealthy. Um, I think, actually, I did hear Silver Planner. He's just won that event uh, against uh, an on-fire Sebastian uh, Kurdel from Germany. Obviously, that big German as well got his first podium last year over in Vida Sander in Denmark. So he's going to be another one to watch. Gunnar Asmussen, now he hasn't done the full tour for a long time, uh, and he is one of the fastest out there. If he can get the jibe sorted, if he can lose a little bit of weight and he can get out the corners, he will be one to watch and he is going to cause some problems. Um, also, on the training side of things, there has been a breakaway group uh, and that's the black team. They're training over in Lanzarote. Now, this doesn't include Matteo Yakino. He's still stuck with the TWS boys. But Lanzarote has had a lot of the 0.7 guys training over there, led by Kurus Kiani, Andrea Cookie. And these guys, uh, it looks like they have put a professional outfit together. Um, so we'll have to wait and see who comes out of that camp. But uh, by all accounts, Bruno Martini has been looking very good over the winter. There's also a true wild card that we have to mention, and it's Marsilio Brown's brother, Gabriel Brown. Yes, and he's racing on Goya slalom boards. Now, that is a new one to hit, uh, hit the beach, but by all accounts, he's going pretty quick. But Tarifa, there is a nice thing going on there. And the main man in Tarifa, well, there's a couple actually, Gonzalo Costa Hovel, he was right up there in the overalls last year inside the top 10. He's been focusing on the foil a little bit, but he is always there or thereabouts. Uh, and he will definitely be one to watch. Uh, but Ben van der Steen, we've got to talk about him. Had his worst year on tour last year for a long time. I think he finished 16th, which uh, he won't be happy about. Uh, he's had a bit of a rethink this winter. He's changed sponsors and he's on Gunn and Patrick boards. Tatty Franz, he's not the biggest, he's not the tallest, but he is right up there in the mix. You do not want to race against Tatty Franz. Even in the early rounds, he is pushing super hard. He does the duck jive around some marks. He just doesn't care. He just likes to win races. And we love to see him on the commentary. He's got a lot of support out there. Last year, his best year on tour with a sixth overall. That is impressive stuff from the Bonarian. Uh, how will he fare in 2017? Well, we'll have to wait and see. Cyril Musulmani. He's been in the running for a world title before, but it was a few years ago now, and he's kind of gone off the boil a little bit. Has he still got the skills? Has he still got the speed? Are people still scared of him? You bet you they are. And 2017, again, could be another good year for Cyril Musulmani. He's got new sponsors in the way of Nova Nova boards. He's still on Severn sales. 
but he's going to really want to step it up and come out swinging in 2017. We also have to mention the old guard. There is still a few out there that can cause some problems. Josh Angulo is definitely one of them. He's got a sales sponsor this year in S2 from Maui. We've also got Finian Maynard, the main man behind the designs of Nova Nova boards, and he is always pushing hard. And rumor has it, Mikey Buzainis might be doing a few events. We'll have to wait and see if he turns up in Korea. Let's put them both together, and we've got the greatest sound in town. The women's tour has been super exciting for a number of years now, with that title race always going down to the last event, and I don't see 2017 being any different. Let's run through the major players for 2017. Sarah Keita Offringer, does she need any introduction at all? Dominant in freestyle for I don't know how many years now, it's getting ridiculous, but she turned her hand to slalom and she has definitely found form. She's not had it all her own way in previous years, but the last two, she has come good by the last event. <laughs> Lena Erdl, she had a great year on tour last year. She came out of the blocks firing with a victory in South Korea. With only two events on the tour, she needed a second or a first place in Denmark to clinch that overall title but it wasn't to be. As I said earlier, Sarah Keita got that victory, leader in third, and she had to settle for second overall. But still, a solid, solid performance from the Turkish rider. She'll be back in 2017, so watch this space. Kusin, 2014 Slalom World Champion. And you bet your life she wants another one of those. In 2015, she was second. In 2016, she was third. She's not liking the way it's going, but don't let those results detract you of how she's sailing on the water. She has got the skills to get another world title. She has got the skills to win more competitions. She's got new sponsors this year with S2, and I think we're gonna see a new Delphin Cousin in 2017. Outside the top three in the ladies, there's a little bit of a gap. Uh, last year in fourth place, it was Japanese rider Onishi. She's very consistent with two fifth places, and that was enough to give her the fourth place. She'll be there or thereabouts, especially with those two Asian legs this year. Also, we've got to mention Fulia Unlu, the youth world champion, has uh, definitely showed form in those early events in the year, especially in Korea where she got her first podium. She's got the speed and she is getting faster and more technically sound every year. Could this be the year she breaks into that top three? She got her first podium at Korea a few years ago. Can she repeat this performance? Well, we'll have to wait and see. the women that can really challenge to get in that top five or top three spot. Uh, a few of the Japanese riders, Anayama, Suzuki, some of the Euro riders, we've got uh, Andres, Kuba. Uh, we've got, I mean, there's so many girls to mention, we can't mention more, but I will mention one wild card this year. She's crossed over from freestyle and it is Uda from Norway, yes, exactly. So it's gonna be interesting to see how she gets on. Very determined, uh, and she's been putting a lot of work in over the winter. So there you go, that is the windsurfing.tv preview for the 2017 season. The major players to look out for, and a couple of wild cards thrown in. Obviously, we can't mention everyone, but they have all been training super hard, and I'm sure a few have slipped through the net. 
and he'll be uh, making me look a right plonker after this first event. But that's how it is. That is how it's going to go down. Stay tuned for that first event in Korea starting very soon. It's going to be an exciting season. Tune in. Lucky, lucky people! <laughs> gunning it for it ah, to maybe race it and to take back so that is it that is our preview for the 2017 slalom pwa world cup obviously we haven't got a clue what's going to happen but what we do know is we've got some professional men and women they've been training balls to the walls and tits to the ceiling <laughs>